Hello guys, welcome to my revamped beginner's guide for global launch. This is a long video. It's going to cover everything that you should need to know to get into Eve Echoes and actually get onto the ground running. Um, I'm going to have all the timestamps for the different, different sections in the description below and in the pinned comment. And you guys can use this at your will to kind of understand the game and kind of get into it and kind of play the way that you want to play. Before I get going though, um, uh, this is just going to be a tester. If you want me to move this content onto a separate channel, please feel free to let me know in the comments. If you would like it to stay on my original channel alongside the rest of my TFT content and you don't mind the notifications for other games, um, I would you know, love to hear that kind of opinion as well. That's the main thing that I ask of you. If you're a new viewer and you want to see EV Echoes content, feel free to like and subscribe. And if I do create a new channel, I will let you know, of course. And there are other good content creators out there, by the way. Um, for instance, I saw while I was making this video, I saw Captain Benzi did a guide to surviving day one. There's people like Sovereign, uh, who is also an incredible content creator. If you want to get a spread of content, go and check out their channels as well. Benzi posts so many Eve Echoes content videos. I'm not going to be able to post uh, everyone every day. I'm pro probably going to be posting two to three a week and focusing on the rest of the games that I do as well. Um, but I do want to, to make it clear that I am playing Eve Echoes a lot. I'm in a corporation right now, and I'll be doing um, some tutorials uh, sort of when I can but this is a revamped beginner's guide um, it's basically the for the changes on global launch and how as a new player you can get in start understanding the game and start playing and enjoying it new beginner's guide okay this is from the very start uh, getting your feet on the ground and getting running in Eve Echoes and the first thing that you're going to be faced with is character creation and race a lot of people are very scared about what race they take because they think it might have an impact on their overall game I can absolutely tell you your race does not matter in this game. There are race-specific skills in EVE Online, but right now in EVE Echoes, there are absolutely no race-specific skills. The only thing that the um, that your race is going to define is what starting uh, ship tree that you're going to have direct access to. Um, but other than that, you can do whatever you want. You could be Galente and you could fly Kaldari. You could be Menmatari, you could fly Amar. It doesn't matter. It's purely for what you sort of like you would like to do like if you have a preferred race from eve online go for it uh if you like the particular law of one of the uh, factions go for it i've always been a caldari player uh, i made my first um my first uh, 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 clone on eve echoes in caldari because i want to be a missile boat for easy pve but Honestly, I could have done that as a Galente very easily. You start off with equal skills in small weapons and all of them, um, and honestly, it, it, you can you, you can essentially play any of the um, any of the races. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to go Galente. Um, the only thing that, that makes a difference is the ship trees in each individual uh, race have different specializations. So, for instance, Galente is is railgun, drone, and armor. Um, they've got something like the Ferox. Um, but honestly. As you can see here, Amar, laser, drone, and armor. Kaldari, shield, missiles, and railgun. Mimitar, hybrid with cannon. But they're, they're, just the, they're just the ships, and that's why it's showing you the ships specifically. It is just the ships that it is talking about. You can make whatever race you want and fly another type of ship if you absolutely want to. It doesn't matter, um, as long as you have the money to buy it or make it. In terms of what you look like or what um, creed you are, I honestly doesn't matter either this is all for just like personalization um standpoint so I, i'll just go for go for her jinmei um and i'm gonna call myself x scoundrel so this is gonna be my industry um this is gonna be my industry alt okay but that, honestly, you can pick whatever you want. It literally makes zero difference to your skills, the way you train, um, what you specialize in. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it honestly does not matter in terms of character creation. You can do whatever you like in this part of the video. Um, so first of all, before we go into the game in too much detail, what can you purchase in the game, this game and what does it actually influence? Well, first of all, you can play the game fully as a free-to-play player. However... What I would say is if you are playing as a free-to-play player, so it's called an alpha clone, you need to be aware of a few things. Alpha clones will have limited access to the market. Um, you can trade at ITC markets in high and low sec, but you will have li more limited access than Omega players would. And this is generally to um, discourage people having alpha clones trying to play the market. So it's a way of just trying to keep the market stable without having alpha clones completely buying out certain things with, a, with an ISK value or whatever, right? So it's just trying to try and protect the market. They are pro prohibited from using the contract function. Um, and you cannot use that until you're an Omega. 
player and contracts can be quite useful later in the game. Um, you're unable to learn certain skills, so certain skills will not be available. You are limited to tech level ships um, and below, um, or even, sorry, tech 7 level ships and below. You can't actually access tech 8, which won't be a problem at this stage in the game, but later in the game it definitely might restrict your enjoyment. Um, you are limited to 30 points per minute in terms of training skills. Um, and when you are not training a skill, you will gain free skill points at 50% of that value. Uh, and also when you are trading with an alpha clone, there is a higher tendency to activate an audit, which is just where um, essentially people will, re will review what is being traded. And that, that is essentially to um, prevent people like selling ISK for real money or like people people basically scamming people or essentially just, just that kind of thing. So really you do... Whilst you have complete access to the game as a free-to-play player, and most people can enjoy Alpha to a good extent, if you're looking to take EVE seriously and you really want to get into it, you might want to consider purchasing one of the Omega packages. There are two forms of Omega package which can be com combined. Basic, which is $4.99 a month, and Standard, which is $12.99 a month, for, for me anyway. I don't know what it is in your particular currency. And then you can get the combo for me at £15, 15 pounds per month. Um, and essentially... When you get the basic Omega clone, you will unlock everything that you couldn't have as an alpha, uh, and you'll grant an extra five points of training per minute, um, and you'll train skill points at 70% of the value when you're not actually training anything. So when you're storing free skill points, you'll train at 70% of the value. The other thing to note is if you have um, an Omega um, clone, and or at least if you have two alpha clones, you can have two alpha clones, you will not be able to train skills on the alpha clone whilst either an Omega or another Alpha clone are training skills. You will have to have two Omega clones to train skills at the same time. So if you're looking to make two characters or three characters, they will have to all be Omega to train skills. So that's one thing you'll have to be aware of. Both of my clones are Omega. I've only got basic for my industry one, but both of my clones are Omega because they... Um, they they i want to train them skills at the same time alpha clones cannot train skills whilst another one of your clones are training skills um the standard omega will receive 25 additional points per minute which comes to a total of 55 if you've if you've just bought that you will then train skill points at an 80 percent speed and also the limit to the amount of free skill points that you can actually bank is increased and if you com uh, com uh, if you purchase both standard and basic the the combo pack you will grant you will grant an additional 60 points per minute of training so your training speed will go up and the um you will get 100 percent of your skill point training speed as free skill points if you're not training a skill and the uh the, the stored limit is close to infinite so obviously the combo pack the 15 pounds a month is what they are aiming for people to buy because that's the, the quickest training speed and also means you're not punished for being offline and you have a, a large volume or a large bank of free skill points that you can have the other things that you can buy are cognitive chips. Now, you only you can buy one of these at each rarity per clone. And essentially, they give you a skill. They give you cognitive neuroscience level 5. And I'm going to show you what they actually activated because I bought them on mine. You go to, uh, it's not on social trade, it's on this one here, uh, biology. Cognitive neuroscience, you gain an extra 5 points per minute. Cognitive uh, neuroscience, another extra 5 points um, per minute an expert cognitive neuroscience another extra five points per minute which means if you buy everything possible to boost your skill training speed you will end up at having an extra 75 um you'll you'll train a, a skill rate of 75 skill points per minute which is um if you compare to an alpha clone a completely free to play player um it is over double the speed so uh, alpha clones can and tra can train at 30 points per minute whereas if you fully charge and spend everything, you can get over double, I think it's about 150%, you can get 150% increase in training speed. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but it's quite clearly a small advantage when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to, to paying, but obviously it depends on how you want to enjoy the game. If you're playing PvE, it doesn't really matter. If you're playing PvP, you, you know, you're going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of skill access and maybe even tech level, um, especially early on in the game, but if you go uh, if you play the game for a long period of time, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Let's talk about skills. This is probably one of the most important parts of the tutorial because skills can be quite daunting at first, but actually if you have a clear goal for your clone, then they're actually quite easy to navigate. First of all, tech level. People will ask about tech level and what it is. Um, 
What it is, is it's essentially a cumulative total of all of the skill points that you have generated, plus any free skill points that you have picked up, including the 500,000 that you will have got for free from the uh, joining a corporation. And we'll talk about that. If we, if we haven't covered that in the video already, we'll talk about it in a moment. So you don't need to spend your free skill points in order to advance tech levels. And actually, the mistake that I made, um, because for some reason I just didn't think about it, is if I'd kept those 500,000 free skill points, I'd be able to put them in tier 5 tech and advance the tier 5 tech levels very quickly. Um, and that includes things like cruiser operation and medium missile control for my Caracal. But I didn't think about that. But for you... What would be a good idea if you're just starting off with skills and you haven't spent any of your free skill points yet is keep them. If you're not intending on flying a destroyer or a frigate, you might want to wait until tech level 5, until you can get into something like a cruiser, um, to spend those free skill points. But, you know, uh, you could also use them to advance your mining uh, or whatever you want to do. Like, it really depends on what you want to achieve in Eve Echoes with your skills. So what is it what is it that you want to achieve? Well if you're if you're looking to be an industry person, focus on the industrial skills like mining, resource processing, uh, if you want to be a, if you want to be producing things production, um, trade is also really important. So for instance accounting, um, freight, again these are all things that you need to have a, you need to have like a, a clear goal in mind when it comes uh, to to your character. So if you are a mining character, Focus mostly on mining or reprocessing, maybe some frigate command for the ventures and looking at potentially um, some some navigation for like trying to get out of a sticky situation, for instance. Okay, so that's what we're going to focus on. You know, it's always good to potentially put some uh, skills into planetology so you can have more planetary interactions. Um, really, it depends on, on on the focus of your character. In terms of sort of a combat character. My advice would be this. Find a style of combat that you like working with, specifically a type of weaponry and a type of defense. And a lot of that comes into the ships that you're interested in flying, which we'll talk about later on in the ship tree part of this tutorial. But focus on one type of uh, weaponry and one type of defense, unless you're Mimitar and you're looking for a bit of hybrid defense. But essentially, play towards the strengths of the ship that you intend on using. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example for me. I'm flying Kaldari. I want to play a Caracal. Caracals are shield tanks and missile boats. So when it comes to electronics, um, sorry, rather um, maintenance technology, shield operation has already been focused. Shield hardening, I'm going towards level five. In terms of uh, missiles, right now I've put quite a few into small missile, um, torpedo and small, small missile uh, operation. Um, that is because I, um, I'm i currently flying in, in a uh, Korax, so I, they can only use small missiles, but I'm eventually going to, going, to be, going to be going to medium missile torpedo operation, okay? Um, and that's eventually going to be what I'm, what I'm going to be focusing on. So, again, just focus on the type of weaponry that suits the type of uh, ship that you're fl f flying in to begin with. To begin with is the key part, right? You can obviously diversify later, but if you want to be as strong as possible for both ratting and potentially PvP, focus on one type of weaponry and one type of defense or the defense that suits your ship um, and work with that until you're in a suitable position and you're strong enough to then start diversifying. You know, I might not want to stick on missiles for the rest of my life. Missiles have always been considered a bit of a meme in PvP on EVE Online. So missiles, while they're great for ratting and great for PvE, not particularly good in, in, a, in a PvP scenario most of the time. Um, assault missiles can usually be good, but it you know, requires specific setups. But I'm not going to go into that much detail right now. So my advice would be select a ship that you like and focus on the skills that are going to benefit that ship. All right? Um... But I will be covering ships later on in the video just in a little bit more detail in terms of finding the right ship for you, right? I'm not going to cover every single ship, but uh, I'll show you how to research the ships and choose uh, what you may like, okay? Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're focusing on here. So when it comes to choosing a type of weapon that you want to focus on, it really is going to depend on what type of ship that you want to fly at the same time. So I definitely would recommend that you research the ships that you're interested in flying and find out what type of weapons that they use effectively. All weapons deal different types of damage. I'm going to put a graph about the types of damage and what it's good versus next to um, next to this sort of on the screen rather when I'm talking. But 
unlike EVE Online, there is no, not currently, any ammo for these weapons. So all weapons deal a fixed type of damage. Um, and you can find out what type of damage a weapon deals by going on to any kind of... Um, uh, actual weapon and looking at the damage types. For instance, lasers, they are two-thirds um, uh, electromagnetic and one-third thermal. It makes them very good versus shields, but not so good versus armor. And it really, again, depends on what you want the function of your ship to be. For instance, lasers, they're a pretty good all-round weapon, but again, only really good versus shields. So you're going to find that they're decent in PvE, uh, but you're going to find maybe in PvP settings, if you're running into armor tanks, that lasers are not going to be particularly effective. Railguns, they are the hybrid um, uh, weapon in EVE Echoes. They are a pretty good all-rounder, honestly. Um, I think hybrid weapons are very fun to play. They have a good mix of both range and up-close damage. Um, and again, they deal in terms of their types of damage. It is a mix between kinetic and thermal, making them decent versus shields and armor so they have they have um, damage to, to sort of deal but they make them they slightly better versus armor as you can see more of the damage coming from the kinetic side of things cannons these are things like auto cannons and uh and and long range cannons and they have a mix between thermal kinetic and explosive making them very good versus armor and okay versus shields they're a pretty good all-rounder as well the only thing that you'll find often with cannons is that for the most part auto cannons require you to be quite up close and personal with your targets which for pve can be a little bit scary if you don't have a very tanky ship Missiles are literally the jack of all trades when it comes to damage. They deal equal percentage damage across electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive, making them a great all-rounder type of weapon. It's what makes them so good in a mixed bag of PvE scenarios, and their effective range, especially when you get to medium missiles, means that you can outrange the majority of your opponents. The problem that missiles have, for the most part, is they're pretty bad in PvP. People can warp out before missiles hit. Um, and they are often quite slow and during the cycle you can often take a huge amount of damage and often while the cycle is completing you'll have already lost the pvp duel versus a droner or versus an auto cannon player and so often when you're playing uh missiles it's much better to be playing as part of a fleet where you can have the protection uh, and and sort of have the the range and the freedom to just fire off missiles over and over again Drones, in my opinion, are the most fun type of weaponry in the game. They're also very good in both PvE and PvP, depending on the setup. And all drones have a specific damage type, depending on the drone that you're fielding. As you can see, um, Amar drones have got all electromagnetic, or if you're looking here, the Hornet has got all kinetic. It, again, drones can be equipped to deal with, with the type of damage that you want them to deal. You can have a mixed set of drones, which allows you to deal a mixed set of damage as well. And drones are, in general, just a really, really cool um, uh, weapon type to go for. Uh, if you, especially if you're starting, uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun with drones. And decomposers, I'm assuming they're uh, equivalent to disintegrators, but they haven't actually listed any um, weapons that are, you can look up here. But I'm assuming decomposers are similar to disintegrators, which ramp up in damage. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't, wouldn't worry about decomposers to begin with. I would choose one of the, uh, the top five here to focus on. For instance, for me, PvE, if you're going to be ratting a lot, missiles are the king. When it comes to PvP, it really depends on what you want to achieve and what role you want in a PvP setting but drones um, cannons railguns and lasers all have their own place in pvp uh, again choose the type of weaponry that suits you and also suits the ship that you're going to be playing speaking of ships let's talk about the ship tree there are four main uh, factions that you're going to be uh, looking at when you're looking at the ship trees, including Amar, Kaldari, Mimitar, and Galenti. If you're a miner, you might look towards Ore because this has the um, uh, the venture uh, and also eventually things like the retriever. So uh, obviously you might want to look towards those later on. I'm going to go back to the ship tree for some reason I just completely closed it. Uh, the ship trees around the outside are usually um, ships that require blueprints to find most of the time. So, for instance, like um, if you look at the Angel Cartel, uh, things like the Dramiel, um, you're going to have to find the blueprint from the Dramiel. And then eventually, once someone finds the blueprint, they'll be able to start producing them and, and selling them for a lot of money. But these kind of ships you're probably not going to find in the market for quite some time until people are able to find those types of uh, uh, blueprints. What you'll be focusing on as a newer player is either, like I said, the ore ships, which includes things like the Venture, or you'll be looking at some of the four main states in the EVE Online universe. Um, 
all of the individual uh, states have their own strengths and weaknesses. If we look over at Amar, let's take, for example, the um, uh, the Coercer Navy issue, right? Have a look at the Coercer Navy issue when it comes to trait descriptions, small laser and armor, okay? So what you're getting from Amar here is that you are getting benefit from having... Um, uh, lasers as well as armor benefits so what you'll find with the Mars ships is they are tailored towards towards laser weapons drones and armor tanking okay so if you want to play armor drones and lasers as a combo you'll focus on a Mars ships and those are the skills that you should be focusing on let's take Kaldari for instance the uh, the race that I'm playing if I go to the Caracal right go to the Caracal go to details look at the trait descriptions medium missile torpedo velocity and you'll notice here on the shields that the shields make up the biggest number when it comes to the defense, okay? So shield tanking is the uh, is the Caracal's strength. If we go to Mimitar, for instance, and we go to one of the more popular um, Thrasher, okay? Trait descriptions. Small cannon, so small auto cannon tracking speed. Uh, and also you can see the defense is mixed. So when it comes to uh, Mimitar, you're looking at both armor and shield defense. So you might want to have a little bit of a mix of both. Um, and that's where you we might split your skills if you're playing if you're playing Mimitar. Or you focus on one or the other and just strengthen that part. But Mimitar ships generally focus across a hybrid form of defense. When it comes to Galente, um, let's have a look potentially the Vexa, for instance. Um, the Vexa is drones. Um, but also if you have a look, it's primarily an armor tank. Uh, mostly most of the defense coming from armor so you're going to focus on armor and droning and that's what that's that's how you get an indication so what you're going to have is you're going to focus on a ship i what i would say is be realistic you're going to spend a lot of time at tech 5 over the next maybe half a month or so Think about a Tech 5 or Tech 4 ship that you want to be, be in. Look at the ones that you think look cool. Um, do some research online. Choose a ship. Look at the skills that it benefits. Look at the weapon types that it benefits. And play that ship and train in those skills. Okay? There's a reason that I am currently going um, for small missiles, for instance, because I'm in a Corax. Um, and you can say there's a small missile on torpedo velocity. Um... And I can see it's a majority a shield tank, okay? So which is why I've invested in shield and also in missiles. But eventually, I'll obviously get into a Caracal and I'll look to do medium missile and shield tanking too, okay? So look at the ships that you want to you want to play in. Focus on the attributes that they benefit um, and then focus your skills in that. And again, when it comes to choosing a ship, just pick honestly pick one that you think is cool take recommendations from friends talk about it with with content creators um captain benzi does a lot of guides and a lot of ships um so if you want to go watch some watch some of his videos he does a lot of individual breakdowns of particular ships um and that's always worth going to check if you if you like the way that he plays with one of them feel free to invest in the same skills and follow the pathway that he did. Uh, but again, it comes down to just feeling what is cool. Uh, if you have a plan for a ship that you want to be in, plan for those skills. That is how you go about choosing a ship in EVE Echoes. Okay, once you've created your character, you'll be going through the basic tutorial. And the basic tutorial is very, very easy. Um, you shouldn't have many issues going through it. Um, as you can see here, uh, mine's bugged out just a little bit. But... If, if it bugs out, you, all you need to do is restart your game and it should be in good shape. I'm actually going to do that now and double check that I can restart and get the rewards for both of those beginner tutorials. So I did uh, a quick restart and you can see that the bugged out basic tutorials have completed. So if you ever run into that issue where you feel like you have done the step to complete the basic tutorial and it's not registering, just restart your game and it should be fine. Then we're going to go on to advanced tutorials. Advanced tutorials are the best way to get a good start in EVE Echoes. Do complete them. Do not ignore them. They give you good rewards. And specifically, Advanced Tutorial 4 gives you access to a um, Tier 4 Destroyer Trainer. And that's really good if you want to do PvE. It's also pretty good if you're looking for a, a large capacity ship to start mining with. You can mine in a Destroyer very easily, okay? So... What you need to do for advanced tutorials is there'll be some necessary missions and then there'll be some optional missions. The optional missions, what it really means to say is you just need to complete one of them. So to advance your tutorial through, um, you need to complete one of the optional missions, but you need to complete both or more of the necessary missions. Usually that is upgrade a tech level or train a skill. As you can see here, mine is upgrade a tech level, which I've completed and I'm just waiting for my third skill to train on my, my second clone. In terms of optional missions, it really depends on what you enjoy doing. If you want to do it as quick as possible, 
do the encounters. Encounters are quick, they are easy most of the time, uh, and you can get through that optional, thre uh, optional threshold very quickly. I quite like ratting, um, so I'm obviously trying to generate bounties as well. But honestly, if you're ratting in tier 1 and tier 2 anomalies, 100,000 in bounties will take you like 50 ships most of the time. You'll have to kill 50 ships, which can take maybe up to, at the start of the game, maybe up to an hour. So completing an encounter, I can complete two encounters probably in the space of 10 minutes. So if you want to rapido through the advanced tutorials, make sure you're doing it with encounters. It's the way that I advanced through the tutorials. I just spammed encounters and I managed to get into a tier 4 destroyer pretty quickly. So the absolute first thing that you you need to do is do the advanced tutorials but excoundrel what do you say like what are encounters how do i do it like where do i even start well let's talk about that now make sure you know what you're doing for the advanced tutorials and you need to claim the rewards inside a station but other than that uh let's start to talk about what else there is you can do including how to get through the tutorials with things like encounters so I'm on my main clone, my combat clone now, to talk to you about the different ways that you can start to make money in Eve Echoes as well as advance through the tutorials. You can see here on my main clone, I am now up to advanced tutorial 5, of which the reward will give me um, Destroyer Engineering level 4. Uh, and you can see in terms of skills, I'm almost at the tech level required to hit this advanced tutorial. So let's start to talk about some of the things that you can do to A, advance through the tutorials, and B, start to make money. The first thing that I want to talk about is encounters. Uh, as you can see at the bottom, the encounter page will bring up this. Uh, and it says tutorials, that will take you back to the, to the tutorial page. The missions that you currently have active will be displayed on the right. The story, so story essentially is, I'm going to show you here on the encounters board. If you go to the news board, this is where you accept encounters. Some encounters will have a little icon um, next to them so for instance on the one on the left gifts for the interstellar idol it'll have a galenti icon next to it and that means it's a story mission an encounter that is relevant to the story and if you haven't done it there, there won't be a small tick next to the icon so for instance here uh music thief worth 50k isk um i have not done that um and it is a galente story mission but for instance gifts for the interstellar idol i have done and i have completed that already so encounters, what you need to do, let's say we're going to, um, I'm not going to do Pyrox series acquisition, but let's say, um, well, actually, actually, having a look at the jumps, there's all of these are about three or three or so jumps away from me. If I refresh, which you can do at the top, it'll actually bring some of them that are a little bit closer to me here. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look at uh, Refugee Left Behind. I've done that before. I'm going to accept it, okay? Once I've accepted it, I can go to my journal, which is over on the right-hand side, and it will show you the encounter that I have uh, available to me here. If you click on an encounter, it will tell you what ship it recommends that you should be in. So for instance, recommended ships, tier 2 destroyer or a, or a frigate. I'm currently in a tier 4 destroyer, so I'm very much um, qualified to complete this encounter. I would always recommend, especially when accepting encounters with high ISK rewards, double check that you are uh, sort of in a good place to be able to do it. Okay, so if you want to start an encounter, you just click on the chat bubble here, you just go through the chat, and then it will essentially autopilot you there. You click confirm, and it will undock you and autopilot you, and you will get to the encounter. So I am going to come back to you once I've got to the location. You just follow the autopiloting, autopiloting instructions. It is really simple, and then we can come back and discuss the end of encounters. So I'm now in the system where the encounter is to take place. It will tell me to walk to the cosmic anomaly um, that um, that the encounter is based at. If you get an error message, and I've had this several times, if you get an error message saying you cannot warp due to a gravitational fluctuation, what you need to do is go to the side panel, click anything like celestial body or cosmic anomaly, and then essentially warp to another cosmic anomaly or warp to another um, uh, sort of location in the system and then try warping to the uh, story mission location again. If you lose the story mission for all, or you lose the encounter location, they will always turn up on the cosmic anomaly section on your, on your sidebar. And your sidebar I'll talk about in, in greater depth in a moment, but essentially it's the little I button and you can sort... Um, you can sort by kind of like type of, uh, of object in the, the system and Cosmic Anomaly will always bring up 
a an encounter anomaly that you need to go to especially if you're in combat so just be aware that if you lose the story mission you can find it again on cosmic anomaly and once you've got through the mission this should be relatively easy for me because i'm in a tier 4 destroyer um there shouldn't be any issues for me killing some slashers and rifters as you can see they'll also give you bounty by the way so when you whenever you kill an npc that is um what we call a rat uh, they'll always give you a bounty, and that bounty will automatically be paid to you after some time. Um, I believe there's a short delay in terms of generating the bounty and getting paid for it, um, but you will be paid directly into your wallet for killing NPCs. It's a really good way for making money, and we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but we're just focusing on encounters for the time being. Um, for combat, you'll have gone through a combat tutorial. It's very easy at the beginning of the game. You don't really have to worry about it too much. You just auto-lock and fire your, your uh, weapons at the, uh, the targets that you want to hit. Uh, but yeah, getting through an encounter, once you have completed, and usually with combat encounters, once you have completed the combat, they will reward you the ISK in your wallet, and that should be the end of encounters. Uh, it's a pretty easy way to generate money uh, to begin with, and it's also a pretty easy way to start advancing through those tutorials, which is why I actually spammed encounters, because they were the easiest optional, optional uh, mission to actually get through the advanced tutorial and get the rewards as quickly as possible. We've talked a little bit about encounters. Let's talk a little bit about what we call ratting or PVE. Okay, this is another good way to make money. You make it primarily through bounties and collecting loot. Uh, and I'll talk about what you do with collecting loot once we have collected some. So I'm going to go to an anomaly in a local system. I'm going to complete an anomaly, or at least I'll try to. And then we will talk about how you're making money through that, that respect and then what you do with the outcomes of the loot that you get there. So the way that you get into uh, an, uh, ratting is you go to your sidebar here. So the little eye, you tap the little eye, you go to Cosmic Anomaly, and you'll see things that say like Gisty or Angel, or Small Anomaly, Medium Anomaly, and Large Anomaly. Those anomalies will have a little number next to them. That represents the tech level of the opponents that you'll be facing, okay? The higher the number, the harder it is. And a good rule of thumb is you are usually able to deal with the tech level equivalent to the ship that you're in most of the time obviously it's a little bit harder the harder it gets um and honestly i would say that uh, there are some situations where you can do better than that for instance caracal can handle tier 7 and tier 8 pretty easily um but you can usually deal with about the equivalent tech level that you are. If you're starting the game, I would recommend that you stick to level 1 and level 2 anomalies. Going to level 3 and level 4 anomalies, especially medium and large, you'll find very difficult. The larger the anomaly, the harder it's going to be for you. When you are in a system and you're doing anomalies, um, doing anomalies that are not the base will level up the base slowly over time, okay? And the higher the base... So the base is usually where there are, are some decent rewards. The higher the base level, the more rewards um, or the better rewards you're going to find at that anomaly. So I've just cleared out this anomaly here and I couldn't find any loot. So I'm going to have to actually go to the base that's only level one and see if we can find some loot to talk about. You'll get bounties for killing the uh, NPCs in these anomalies. And also, NPCs have a chance at dropping some loot. Also, every time that you complete an anomaly in a system, you have a chance to spawn an Inquisitor anomaly, which is an anomaly that has a warp gate at it. And at the end of the waves of the Inquisitor anomaly, you'll be able to potentially find some rare and uh, very, very um, lucrative blueprints, which you can sell on the market. This is generally a pretty good way to make money in EVE Echoes. It's also quite a fun way for me to make money. I like destroying things, so... Uh, I find it one of the more fun ways compared to something like mining. Um, but yeah, what you're going to do is you're going to go to these, these anomalies and you're just going to kill NPCs to generate economy. And what else, you, you, what else you're going to be looking for are, are sort of the loot drops that they find. Now, what I would say is that the, the loot that you get at level 1 and level 2 um, anomalies is usually not going to be very good. But you can sell it on the market for a small amount of money depending on the type of uh, loot that you find. MK1 stuff will go from anywhere between... 200 isk to 1000 or 2000 isk depending on what it is that you're what you're looking for but yeah once you've killed things you'll be able to see here frigate wreck if i loot and approach that you can see that there's a a slasher and a coercer in this uh in this angel base right now so there's, there are a couple of other people that are also doing the same thing as me um if you if both of you tag a um uh if if, if two of you up to two of you tag a um ship you will share the bounty so i'm going to uh i'm going to this frigate wreck to see what's in it right now if there is anything in it it might have already been looted 
It's got an MK1 warp core stabilizer. Cool. Okay, let's say that we've done a, 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 a PvE anomaly now. We're going to head back to base with our loot. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do with the loot to, uh, to use the market. By the way, quick little tip. If you want to go back to a base that you have got um, uh, inventory at, all you need to go do is go to your inventory tab and go to your personal assets and it'll list all of the bases that you currently have stuff at. And then you can go and click on it and click on the bottom here where it says one jump, set as destination, set the autopilot going, uh, and then you'll arrive and dock back at your base where you have stuff in your inventory at the base. Okay, so you are back at base now. You've got some stuff in your inventory. Select all, move to item hanger. Great. We have some stuff in the inventory that we might want to sell. Let's have a look at the MK3 inertial stabilizer. How much do I want to sell it for? Well, okay. View market details. They are selling, well, at this station, they're selling for 38,000, but on average, they are between 3,000 and 5,000 across the galaxy. So I can tell you that the market price is definitely not 40,000 at this station. Also, how many people are actually wanting inertial stabilizers? They're not like a shield booster or a shield extender, and they're not weapons, so they're not something that's going to be sought after to a massive degree. So I'm going to take a, a sort of a, a market price estimate here and just say, let's sell it at about 4,000. It's somewhere in the middle. We're also a station that isn't a massive trading hub, so people might not want to travel out here for something like that. But that's the way that you essentially do it. MK1 small shield state uh, shield booster. At this station, it's on for 150,000, which is a complete joke. But um, across the galaxy, they're about between 200 and 500. Well, 200 is very low. Um, 500 seems pretty low. I, I could probably put it on for 600, and someone might end up buying it at some point. A lot of this is guesswork, like just having a look at what's on the market and thinking all right, what is that worth? What do you think I can sell it for over here? And a lot of it is trial and error. Um, if you're wanting to sell something quickly, it's better to put it on for cheaper. If you don't mind waiting or you have something that you think is high value, you can always put it on at a price and wait. You can see MK1 Shield Booster, an Guard, has already sold for 800. So maybe I put it on for a slightly lower price than necessary. But nonetheless, it's only 800 disc. I'm not exactly going to lose sleep over it. So that's the way that you make money on the market with the stuff that you find. You can also do this through mining and selling your ores. But right now, I would say that mining is not the best way to make money because everybody is mining and not many people need to use the ores. Once we get a little bit further into EVE where production starts and people start needing the ores to build their ships, mining will become much more lucrative. But right now, people are flooding the market with ore and no one's needing to buy it. If you're sensible and you want to start and you want to start using production as a, uh, a tool, or you want to play the market, you'll buy the ore really cheap now, and then you'll sell it later when people actually start to use the, uh, use, have, have the need for it for production. So if you've actually made a bit of money, um, and I actually might do something the same, I, I've kind of um, managed to build up to about 1.3 mil, um, which is not, not a bad start, honestly, for a, sort of the first day, um, especially because it's going to cost me about three or four mil, maybe a bit more, um, to get on the road with my Caracal. Um, it's maybe good, you know, if you've got the money to invest in, in things like that are cheap now, like the ores, and then sell them when people start actually getting into manufacturing. But that's just me. I'm just saying something worth considering. Uh, yeah, so that is uh, that is market, and that is one of the ways that you can make money on uh, Eve Echoes. So we've covered encounters, ratting, looting, and the market. Now we're going to talk a little bit, a bit more about industry. When it comes to industry, there are three, three or so main ways to make money. The first of which is mining. Um, mining is pretty simple, okay? Uh, what, and there are mining tutorials out there. If you want to figure out how to mine, I will link you to some mining tutorials by myself or Captain Benzi. Um, I'll put them in the description below just for your, for your viewing pleasure. But mining is pretty simple. Get yourself a mining ship or even just a basic frigate or a destroyer with a large cargo hold. Equip some miners. Go out uh, of a station. Go onto the I button on the side and look for asteroid belts and go to an asteroid belt, click on an asteroid and start mining. Um, that is essentially what you do. You fill your cargo hold out, cargo hold back, you come back to a trade center um, and you put it on the market. Something that I didn't mention when it comes to trading, um, you need to trade at an ITC or a trading center. If you go to the market tab, you'll be able to see um, all of your nearby trading centers. Be aware that some trading centers are more busy than others. For instance, the one of the most popular trading centers in all of EVE is Jita 4. Um, so you can always go to there if you're looking to get um, easy sale volume. But trading centers across the uh, galaxy will have stock eventually and people will start to be more busy across several trading centers. 
Um, but yeah, when it comes to mining, follow a mining tutorial, but essentially find a frigate or a destroyer that you want to work with, equip some mining lasers to it and go out and go crazy. It's, it's actually not that difficult whatsoever. Um, when it comes to the ore, you have two options. You can sell the ore at its base value or you can reprocess it yourself. And what I'm going to talk about here is when it comes to industrial technology. Um, what I would recommend if you're planning on reprocessing ore yourself is to put skills into ore reprocessing. And I would focus on certain types of ore that you want to reprocess, okay? Um, common ore includes things, and it'll tell you which kind of ore it includes, but things like Veldspar, um, uh, not Veld, this one here, uh, plagi Plagioclase, I can never pronounce that. So Veldspar, Plagioclase, Scordite, okay? Those are the common ores. I would focus on one type of ore that you're planning on mining, and if you want to reprocess it yourself, do so through the ore reprocessing. I would say at the start of the game, it's probably better to just sell it on the market. But once you start to get some reprocessing skills in your back pocket, you can then start to reprocess it and sell it on the market as well. Um, I will link a... Um, I'm going to start to update my mining spreadsheet, and I'll link my mining spreadsheet in the description once it's completed. It might not be when this video goes live. But if you want to start looking at... Um, mining and you want a spreadsheet to help you figure out how much money you can make per uh per meter cubed of your hold i've got a mining spreadsheet that should be able to help you out with that uh, but when it comes to at this stage of the game usually it's better to just sell the ore on on the market and later on once you've got some reprocessing skills you can start to think about reprocessing yourself the other way to play this is investing in reprocessing skills and not investing in mining building up a bit of a, a bank and then buying ore, reprocessing it yourself and selling it on the market for a profit. That is another way that you can approach money making when it comes to mining. That would involve you putting skills into reprocessing, buying out some of the cheap ore like Veldspar, etc., reprocessing it yourself uh, and then putting it on the market for a higher value. But again, be aware, industry is not quite rolling on the first day of Eve Echoes. Um, if you're watching this tutorial maybe three or four weeks down the line, then yes, maybe think about doing that because people will start to be building their own ships and industry will start to be going. And then speaking of industry, there is another very, very good way to make money and that is through building ships. Industry is, is manufacturing um, and re reverse engineering comes when you found blueprints and you want to reverse engineer the blueprints. Um, that'll be happening a little bit later on. And again, like it says, success is not guaranteed. But if you find a blueprint that you want to reverse engineer um, and you want to have that blueprint for yourself, that's what reverse engineering can do. When it comes to manufacturing, you can manufacture pretty much anything in the game, but you require the blueprint for it. And, and then whenever you're looking to uh, manufacture something, you'll need to have the blueprint plus planetary materials and minerals, which is things like mixalion, pyrite, and titanium, or tritanium. All of that comes from reprocessing ores, okay? So all ores have different composites in them, and reprocessing them will release those composites, and people will sell those in the market. That is where mining and reprocessing and selling is going to become useful, because when people start building ships, because obviously everybody is going to want ships. Ships don't just exist. People have to build them for you, and then they sell them on the market. That is where things like mining and reprocessing are going to become very, very important. Um, so that's when things are going to start selling. But if you want to be, an, uh, uh, um, if you want to build your own uh, ships and sell on the market, you can have a very successful and uh, uh, sort of um, uh, illustrious career by building ships and selling them on the market, especially when it comes to things like cruisers, where there won't be that many to begin with, you'll probably be able to get a huge amount of money out of that. So that's how you go about building a ship. You go to industry, you go to manufacture, you choose the ship that you have a blueprint for, for instance, and then you uh, get the uh, the planetary materials, you get the minerals either from mining them yourself or buying them on the market. And we'll talk about planetary materials in a moment. And then you build the ship and then you sell it. That is another way of making money. It's a little bit harder to do, requires a bit more investment. Probably won't see too many people using this as a form of income yet, um, but it is something that you will have in your back pocket later on the line in Eve. And one of the final easy ways to make money is planetary production. So you go to the tab, you go to planetary production, and what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to choose moons in your system that will have uh, a certain amount of resources on. So for instance, right here, um, I have chosen Nakugad 5 because it has a decent um, yield of base metals and lustering alloy, okay? Uh, and you have to do continuous mining in process here to make sure that the, uh, that the, um, the, 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 the planetary uh, materials are being mined. What happens when you want to... Um, what happens when you want to collect is you launch 
your planetary materials and then you set as destination so you can see in the bottom right here you set as destination and then you autopilot over and you should find containers with planetary materials in them that you're able to collect so that's what happens you mine over the course of, uh, of just by setting them up from the planetary production menu and then you launch them once you've generated enough uh, and then you set as destination you go and pick up those materials and with those materials you can either keep them for industry or you can sell them on the market for uh, whatever value that they hold at that point in time. Some materials are more valuable than others and we'll find out which ones are going to become in demand but things like lustering alloy, base metals, condensed alloy, those ones usually do really well because they are directly involved in shipbuilding. So any of the materials that are directly involved in shipbuilding are very likely going to be worth a high amount on the market. So just be aware when you're setting up, alloys and metals are usually going to do pretty well because they are needed in shipbuilding. So if you're looking to choose a particular type of um, planetary uh, material that you want to set up, then then I think you know things like alloys and base metals are always going to be a good shout because they're used in shipbuilding and that's going to be a big industry of course in Eve Echoes. And so yeah, like I said, you launch, you set its destination, you go to the loot tab on your, um, your view bar and you just collect the loot that is in those launched pods and they will be named after you as well so you'll be able to see exactly which ones are yours. There are a few other things that you need to be aware of, but uh, to end this off, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the future of what you can do. There are things like deliveries. You can be an interstellar hauler. Again, Captain Benzie had a video on that in the beta. I never got around to doing it because I'm a bit more of a casual player, um, but you can do that. Um, I would recommend trying to find a corporation. The reason I would recommend trying to find a corporation in this game is because the game offers you 500,000 free skill points just for joining a corporation. They are they are definitely trying to encourage people to uh, join corporations and and sort of and sort of have fun in the game that way. So go to the corporation tab, apply to some corporations, and you'll get 500,000 free skill points. It's a pretty much a no-brainer. Or you can make your own corporation. You can make your own corporation, but that obviously does require you then to potentially look into. If I go to skills, if you're looking to take your own corporation seriously, corporation management. Um, is going to be an important part of um, is going to be an important part of uh, of looking after your corporation if you're taking it seriously. But other than that, uh, that is essentially everything that you need to know to get going in Eve Echoes. I've revamped this uh, this guide. Um, hopefully, you guys uh, will have fun out there and uh, yeah, enjoy yourself.